Have you ever been frustrated by a pesky error message while coding? If you've ever encountered a 400 bad request error, you're not alone. Today, we're going to tackle this common issue and show you how to handle it effectively. I totally get it. Dealing with error messages can feel like hitting a brick wall, especially when you're just starting out. You're not the only one who has faced this challenge. Many developers have been there, and it's completely normal to feel stuck. Let's dive into the specific situation at hand. One user reached out with a question about handling a 400 bad request error when using an API. They mentioned that when a misspelled search term is entered in their search bar, the API returns this error. Sound familiar? Let's explore how to fix it together. So what does this error mean? A 400 bad request indicates that the server cannot process the request due to something that is perceived to be a client error. In this case, it could be a misspelled search term that the API cannot understand. Let's break down how to handle this and stick around. At the end of this video, I'll share a pro tip that will help you avoid these errors in the future. You won't want to miss it. To handle the 400 bad request error, the user should first ensure they are correctly checking the response from the API. This involves using a try-catch block to catch any errors that occur during the API request. Next, the user should check the response status code. If the response indicates a 400 error, they can extract the relevant information from the error object to display a user-friendly message. Now, the user can update their conditional statement to handle the error properly. Instead of checking for a generic condition, they should specifically check for the 400 status code and display the error detail. Finally, the user should test their implementation by entering various search terms including misspelled ones, to ensure that the error handling works as expected. Fun fact, did you know that the term 400 bad request is one of the most common HTTP status codes? It's like the server's way of saying, hey, I can't help you with that. Now let's look at the answers provided by other users. An alternative approach suggested by another user involves using the fetch API to handle the 400 bad request error. They recommend checking the response status within a promise chain. Let's check out another perspective from a different user. An alternative approach shared by another user involves using the fetch function to handle the 400 bad request error. They suggest checking the response code after converting the response to JSON. If the code is 400, it logs an error message. Otherwise, it logs the successful response. Here's the pro tip I promised. Always validate user input before sending it to the API. This simple step can save you a lot of headaches and prevent those annoying error messages. And there you have it. You now know how to handle a 400 bad request error effectively. Remember, validating user input is key to smoother coding experiences. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe for more tips and tricks.